we don't have sponsors for the lecture, so uh, any volunteers, um, we'd um, really appreciate it. And on the topic of uh, sponsors, we'd like to thank Jeffrey Conahan, who's the um, sponsor for tonight's um, lecture as well. Um, the title of tonight's lecture, the writing on, on the Facebook wall, a cross-cultural comparison between Australian um, Greek and Australian Greek Facebook users. Um, so what tonight's speaker will look at is that, well, social media is such an intrinsic part of our lives these days. How does um, identity formation occur um, on um, social media, and particularly sort of Facebook, and how does it differ between different groups, different groups of Greek ancestry, those based in Greece, those of Greek ancestry in Australia, and how do, and, and what way do they use it differently? Um, and to give um, tonight's lecture, we have Maria uh, Stavrinou, um, who actually just arrived from Greece sort of last night, so I hope she's not suffering um, too much um, jet lag. Um, Maria is um, born and bred in Wellington, so she's part of Wellington's Greek community, but now she's based in, um, in Brisbane. Um, and continuing on this New Zealand theme, next week we've got Mikhail Tanika from Kinders University, who's also Maria's supervisor. Um, he will be speaking, uh, it's the, the Mr. Telemas Memorial Lecture. He'll be speaking on the works, uh, works of Antigone Kefala, who's also another New Zealander uh, Greek who actually moved to Sydney. So there's a trend here. If you're New Zealander and you're any good, you move to Australia. <laughs> uh, however, I might retract that statement because that, that will include Barnaby Joyce as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll qualification, <laughs> so. Okay. Um, just a bit of background about Maria. As I said before, um, her family's from the uh, Wellington sort of uh, Greek community. And then she moved to uh, Australia to study law at Fund University. She's a, a practicing legal practitioner. And um, uh, last year she commenced her PhD at Flinders University on this particular topic. So she's going to present the results of some of her research um, to date. So a big round of applause for our speaker tonight, Maria Stavrino. <laughs> okay, how close do I have to be to the microphone? All right, good evening everyone. Um, before I start off, I'd just like to thank Nick and his team for making tonight possible um, and for inviting me to speak here. Uh, as he mentioned, I'm going to be speaking today about the Greek online experience. It's a topic that's very close to my heart because the last couple of years I've been researching it formally as a PhD student at Flinders University in Adelaide. Uh, the topic itself is a branch of Greek research. So I'm working closely with Dr. Michael Tsianikas, thank you Nick, who's the head of the Greek Research Department at Flinders, who will be speaking next week, as Nick mentioned. So it's a relevant topic. Social networking sites have taken the world by storm. And that's an understatement. When you see some of the stats here, you'll know what I mean. Some popular social networking sites other than Facebook include Twitter, Instagram, uh, I'd say, uh, what are some of the more popular ones at the moment? LinkedIn, yeah, yeah, link Facebook's the most popular, that's right, so it <laughs> overrides the rest of them. But LinkedIn, um, Snapchat, so there's a number of um, sites out there that are quite popular. Facebook by far is the most popular. Some older social networking sites were MySpace, if anyone remembers MySpace. Uh, Bebo, which was quite popular in New Zealand, I'm not too sure about its popularity here in Australia, and ICQ, for some of the older members, it was a, probably one of the original social network sites um, that hit the scene. Anyhow, it's a phenomenon. Social networking sites are a phenomenon. They're closely linked to, I guess, um, the rise of the internet. As of January this year, over four billion people in the world that's over half the world's population, are using the internet. So four billion people are internet users. So likewise, as of January 2018, just over three billion people in the world are active social media users. That's a lot of people. Of those three billion people, 1.4 billion people use Facebook, 
1.4 billion people. I was reading the other day, it's something like 11 million people each second log into Facebook. So that's a large amount of people. This is just to put it into perspective. I compiled a um, quick list here just to give you guys an idea of the leading countries um, based on numbers of Facebook users. So these are the top 10 countries here. India with 270 million followers, followed quite closely by the United States with 210 million users. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire list. We've got the United Kingdom at the bottom there making the top 10. One interesting thing to note Yes, we'll get to Australia soon. We'll get to Australia and Greece soon. But one inter interesting thing to note is China didn't make the list. That's because the Chinese government banned Facebook a long time ago. And they banned Facebook because they wanted to create a social networking platform that would compete with Facebook. They recognised Facebook's popularity overseas. So they created WeChat. Now, WeChat is the Chinese Facebook. And they have about 1 billion users in China. 1 billion. So if we look at that other stat, 3 billion users, 1 billion of those users are probably using WeChat. If WeChat didn't exist and the Chinese government allowed you know, Facebook to compete um, with other social networking sites within China, um, you know, the users, Facebook users might be over, well over 2 million. 2 billion. Easy. But the Australians and the Greeks, they're like a drop in the water, a drop of water in the ocean. So Australia has 15 million users, Greece having only 5 million users. It's a lot smaller than the numbers you see up on the screen here. But bear in mind, over half of each country's population, so half of the Australian population and just over half of the population of Greece are online and on Facebook. So that's still quite significant. So because social networking sites um, have taken the world by storm, there have been a lot of studies that have been conducted on social networking sites and Facebook in particular. A lot of those studies, uh, however, only focus on the demographic, demographics of people using social media and they only focus on the motives, so what motivates people to use social media. Uh, so what do we know so far? I'm not going to go through all of those studies, but we have learned a few things. So for example, uh, as far as demographics go, younger people under the age of 25 tend to use social media more often than older people. So as the age of the user increases, their usage decreases. I'm not sure if that comes as much of a surprise. It didn't come as a surprise to me because I'm used to seeing young people walking around uh, on social media and so forth. So uh, that's not a surprising um, fact. Another fact are that there are more male users on social media than female users. So more males have accounts, active social media accounts, than females. However, females spend more hours on social media than males. That didn't surprise me either. Now, as far as culture goes and the impact of culture on Facebook, there has really been um, only one study that's looked at uh, how culture may impact uh, fa Facebook and social media usage in general. The study specifically emphasised Facebook. So, it basically outlined that people from more conservative cultures, such as Middle Eastern cultures, may share less publicly on social media sites uh, when compared to people from less conservative cultures who tend to bear it all online. So this particular study focused on Americans and Qataris. So Qatar being a small nation in the Middle East, very conservative nation, uh, and then the United States being a very liberal, open uh, society. They found that people from these less conservative cultures were more likely, for example, to have very, very, very strict privacy settings. So they were not impressed and not, uh, I guess, happy to share their information with just anyone uh, as compared to users in the States. They also tended to 
not use profile pictures, so they were more likely than um, their American counterparts to use fake profile pictures or uh, no profile pictures whatsoever, and also more likely to not use their full name or use a variation of their name. So privacy was a big concern for cultures, for people using uh, Facebook who come from conservative cultures. So as far as the impact of culture goes, that's really um, all there is out there. There are a few smaller studies and some pilot studies. Uh, I'm not really going to go into them too much because uh, a lot of the stuff that they convey, again, has to do more so with media usage as to social media usage as opposed to uh, the effects that it pays on those particular users of social media. Now, one study I will draw your attention to was a study completed in Greece in 2015. I'll share with you a few of the results. The study, whilst it didn't cover culture as an aspect for uh, the way in which Greeks use social media, it's interesting to share because it does have um, some relevance being that it was a study conducted on Greek social media users. So there were 400 participants that took place in the study. Uh, the study was basically a survey that was conducted in which these 400 participants asked, were asked a multitude of questions relating to their social media use, so it wasn't specific to any particular social network site. This graph here indicates uh, some of the responses. They were asked which were the most popular networking sites uh, that they were familiar with and that they use. So the majority of the applicants, no surprises there, uh, selected Facebook, so the majority of the applicants obviously had Facebook profiles of themselves. Uh, YouTube, quite interestingly enough, which is also considered a social media site, came in quite close to Facebook. Now, a lot of these uh, participants used both forms of social media, so they may have used Facebook and YouTube, and not just Facebook alone. They were asked to describe some of the advantages. So these weren't multiple choice questions. These were answers that participants gave. An interesting one up there, I'm not going to go through all of them, but an interesting one there, the second line there, that's pretty standard. So they felt that one of the advantages of social media was that they were able to get into contact with you know, old acquaintances and friends from school years. I think that's across the board. I've seen many other studies that indicate that um, that's one of the advantages that many people find um, social media gives them. So nothing about the results from this particular study seem to be that unique. Another um, advantage I thought was quite interesting is down the middle here. Assisting police in solving various cases. Um, I have to admit that was one answer I didn't expect to see. So um, one of the advantages with social media, according to these participants in Greece, was that it assists police in solving various cases. Um, I could only think, I, I try and think of sites on Facebook that I've seen that a lot of Greeks use. Um, and I think of Nikoluli, I think it is, on one of the famous, um, one of the famous crime investigation shows in Greece. Um, she has an active Facebook page, but I just can't imagine. Um, other than that, I don't know what else that they could be referring to. But those are the, um, you know, the, the advantages that a lot of the Greeks that participated in the survey highlighted. Some of the disadvantages. Again, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll give you guys a little second to read through some of them. Um, I'm going to point out the ones that I felt are quite obvious and are, I guess, answers I'd expect to see in, from various other uh, surveys taken in various other parts of the world. Uh, for example, one of the primary concerns or one of the primary disadvantages that uh, participants noted uh, arise are the risk of person, personal information being leaked. So I think that's a general concern that many people would probably have across the board. I don't think it's quite Greek specific. Um, and then obviously the one above that, dependence due to lots of hours of usage. So I can see how that could be a disadvantage. Um, and an interesting one, which I think I'll point out, 
The second line there, they say, not the second line, the third line, give public relations course and track other lives. The translation isn't perfect. But what they're trying to say is one of the disadvantages of social media are that it allows people to track other people's lives. Although previously they were saying uh, one of the quite popular answers was that it allows people to connect with people they haven't seen in a while. So it almost seems like they want to know what other people are doing, but they don't want people knowing what they're doing. So it's a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, of an unusual response to see. But look, aside from that, coming out of Greece, I haven't seen any other studies which discuss Facebook uh, in, to you know, in, in such a way that, in, that looks at culture. I haven't seen any studies that uh, try and examine whether or not culture plays a role or whether or not culture um, has anything to do with the way Greek, Greeks are using social media online. I haven't seen any studies whatsoever on what Greek Australians are doing. So we don't even know whether Greek Australians, how frequently they're using social media. I imagine they come under the statistics um, of the general Australian population. So that's something that hasn't been studied. I think if a similar survey was conducted um, on social media usage here in Australia and on Australian Greeks, we might expect to see similar results. So there's no real surprises there. I'm interested in culture. Does it affect the way in which people uh, are expressing themselves online? Does it affect the way in which uh, people are projecting their personal beliefs online? Does culture affect user content? So that's what my, the focus of my research is on. Very few studies, as I've said, have touched on it, except for that one exception that I mentioned earlier to do with the conservative societies versus non-conservative cultures. So I've been devoting my uh, time studying this particular question. How does culture affect social media usage? Unfortunately today, I can't share with you a lot of my results because they're not published yet. <laughs> so. Um, it's a, a fortunate situation I find myself in. Maybe one day in the near future I'll be able to share with you um, some, some of the, those results. But what I am going to be discussing today, I'm basically going to be giving you guys a bit of a behind the scenes look at an active social media page. It's a Greek social media page with a very large organic following. It's a social media page which was one of the reasons why I began my uh, research project at Flinders. So the site is a site that I created. I can't use it for my uh, research purposes, which is why I'm allowed to present on it today. Uh, it's a site called Miazistika Limera. A little bit of background about the site. So years and years ago, I started noticing when I was uh, coming into contact with my friends and family in Greece on Facebook that they were using Facebook in a very, very different way from the way in which I was using Facebook. I looked a bit further and I realised that they were using Facebook in a very different way in which Greek Australians that I know were using Facebook. And then naturally I turned to my Australian friends and I thought, well, hang on a minute, they're using Facebook in a completely different way from the Australians. So the Greeks in Greece, this is me now thinking, seem to be utilising what's a fairly generic platform in a very different way, almost like they've created their own set of rules. What do I mean by that? A very simple um, example. The Greeks in Greece have a habit of wishing people, wishing their friends, I should say, on Facebook, good morning or a good day. So I'm not sure if many of you know many people online who are in Greece. If you follow some of their pages, you'll notice that they tend to share a few posts in the morning which say good morning. And I'm sure if you have friends in Australia or friends um, you know, who are Greek Australian and are connected to Facebook, you may not be seeing the same pattern. So that's not a coincidence. Having seen that, I decided to casually monitor this phenomenon by creating my own page and letting it grow organically. So by organic, an organic following in Facebook just means that there haven't been any uh, advertisements. So I haven't advertised, I haven't 
um, you know, invited people to like the page. I've let the page grow naturally. So at the moment, the page, <laughs> this is the page. <laughs> this is a snapshot of the page. I won't be sharing, you're more than welcome to um, jump online and have a look at it. I won't be sharing notes and names from individuals who have posted. Um, it's obviously public information, so you're more than welcome to have a little look. But f I just thought, it, to be fair, I might just keep it quite generic. As you can see here, so this is current, this is as of today. 40,671 people are following this page. The purpose of this page, I remind you, is solely to wish people a good morning and a good evening at night. And I must also say that this is one of many pages out there on Facebook that Greeks follow. I've seen one, I won't mention the title, but something like 270,000 followers. So these pages are quite popular. And the sole purpose, like I said, of the pages like this are to wish people a good morning or a good day and a good evening. So what do I do? Each morning, uh, it's automated now, so I'm not there every morning like this over my phone, but each morning it's automated. The same time every morning, one post is uploaded. I monitor people's comments and reactions to that particular post to get an idea of um, the reach of that particular post. Being an administrator, I get um, special privileges. So I'm allowed to see things that, say, a normal follower can't see. I get to see statistics. I'm going to share some of them with you now. So for example, when I open the page, I get to see little graphs, all sorts of graphs. This is one of the graphs. So this particular graph, it's recent, so I've tried to keep it as recent as possible. It gives uh, me, as an administrator, an idea of how many people are organically liking the page and unliking the page, because we always get a few of those people. Um, and then the net likes. There are no paid likes, which is the dark blue, because I haven't paid for advertising, as I've stated. So the net likes basically reflect um, the real term likes. So for example, if I get four organic likes and then three unlikes, there's only one net like. As you can see, it's actually quite, s I mean, it, don't be deterred by the sharpness of those spikes there's actually quite a steady increase in the amount of people who are following this page. So it's something like five or six people a day of a, on average are liking this page. Uh, you can only imagine what's going on with those larger pages, the pages that have followings of 270,000 plus people. So another graph that pulls up on my page shows me how many people access that particular page each day. So this is the last week that's been. You can see the average number really is about 33,000 people. That's the average number of Greeks who are visiting this site. I say Greeks because the majority, I'll show you soon, but the majority of people uh, who are following this page are Greeks and Greek nationals. It also shows down the bottom the times at which most of these users are active. So. I'll come across and show you guys from here. That's Greek time. So 3 a.m. in Greece. They don't sleep. <laughs> they don't sleep. So 3 a.m. in Greece. 15,000 people are viewing this one particular web pa uh, page on Facebook, which its sole purpose, like I said, is just to wish people good morning. So it's not that there's a lot of content being shared or uploaded on this page to make it, uh, to, to warrant this sort of traffic, I'd imagine. But 15,000 people at 3 a.m. Now, in contrast, I have a friend who, uh, she has a, a business, so she has a pay, her own page, and out of curiosity, I asked her, I said, what time are Australians accessing your page? because I'm getting all sorts of, you know, interesting um, numbers here. Uh, and she, ba it was basically the opposite. So 3 p.m. she'll get a lot of traffic, and we get the traffic at 3 a.m. So that alone is a very interesting factor. Now, how does that, what does that say about culture? We all know that socially Greeks um, 
well, they have a very different, let's say, um, outlook on life. So you find that they seem to be awake later hours in the evening. So they're up a lot longer, um, a lot longer by, <laughs> by the looks of this. And um, I can only say that that reflects, um, that reflects what I'm seeing here in this particular graph. As far as the demographics go, so you remember a lot of the um, most users who use social media are males, and most uh, females, however, are on female or are on social media for much longer than males. This here is a representation of the uh, demographic data of people who like that particular page, so Miyazaki Kalimera, and it's based on the information that they've allowed. Uh, me to see. So, for example, Facebook has the privacy settings, as we know. So, um, if you don't want to reveal your sex, you don't have to. If you do, you can select whatever you, you know you are. So, it's reliant on that. But I think it gives you quite a clear picture. So, women seem to be a lot more interested in Yasuste Kalimera than men are. Um, and 30% of, uh, well, the majority of the people are actually between the ages of 35 and 64 as opposed to 25 and under, which the numbers are very low. Obviously, the content doesn't interest them as much as um, it interests older people. Um, so I, f I felt that that was quite interesting. Now, where are these people located? So again, due to privacy settings, uh, they can't. some people don't always reveal their location. Um, my location is set for the Gold Coast. That's where I live. Other people, my sister, for example, doesn't have the Gokko set as her location, so it's up to each individual. The people who have selected their location, um, basically that data is available to me as well. So I know, based on this information here, that 35,000 of the 46,000 people that follow that page are based in Greece. 1,600 of them are based in Cyprus. That's a very small... Um, number when you compare it to um, the Greeks in Greece. This is just the top ten, so I've even got people in China who are following the page. I don't even know how that's possible considering Facebook isn't um, legal, so they must have some sort of uh, ways of getting around that. But um, anyhow, these are the top ten countries. There aren't really any surprises there except for, say, Romania, Bulgaria and Albania. Uh, I feel that um, most of the other countries that are listed there have very large Greek populations as it is, so it would appear that there are a lot of Greeks who live overseas are following this page also. Now, it's broken down into cities, I'm not going to go through that with you, but these are just some of the cities that are represented there. Uh, obviously, a no-brainer, Athens and Thessaloniki being the most um, heavily populated cities in Greece, most of the users that are following the page have listed those cities as being their uh, location. So. 46,000 and only 35, or the majority, so 35,000, are actually in Greece. Now, as far as the posts go, so I have, this is what my screen brings up for me. Each post, you can't see them there, but they're listed by date. So there are two posts that go up each day, the good morning and the good evening post. Now, I have a list of every single post I've ever uploaded since way back oh, 2015, so it's been running for a while, this, this particular page. And it shows me the reach, so in orange, uh, the amount of people that have actually interacted with that particular post on that particular day. And the two bars on the, co on the side there, on the last column, the blue bar represents the amount of people who've liked the particular post and the number of people who have uh, shared or commented on the particular post are in the red. So that itself doesn't really show you anything. I wanted to sort of give you guys a bit of an idea of how I'm able to collect my data on this particular page. What this does say are uh, that some posts, and we expect this to be the case, are more popular than others. I'll show you now what the popular posts, the content of the popular posts are. So. Every morning I'm saying hello, the only difference is small differences in content, so the image might change. 
so I, don't worry, I don't use copyrighted images. <laughs> I use copyright free images. Um, the image might change. So one morning it might be a little puppy saying good morning. The next day it might be a bunch of flowers saying good morning, have a nice day. The following day it might be a little baby saying good morning, um, have a nice week and so forth. So the content varies ever so slightly but the concept's the same. So as you can see there, some posts are very, very popular. You can see one there, 10,000 10, people have um, taken a look at that image. You can't see it there, but it's a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's a cup of coffee. So what does my study, what, what does this page reveal about the Greeks? And why, the why, I don't know the why yet. <laughs> I, I, I'm still to get to the why. One day I'll be resenting on the why. But what I found is images, such as this next image here, very, very simple image. Kalimera, ora ya kafedaiki. It's time for a coffee. Just a photo of two cups of Greek coffee. Again, this is behind the scenes, so this is what I see. 19,000 people responded to this particular image. 1,528 people liked this particular image. Now, 267 of those people liked the image on the page itself. The page, that the page offers people the opportunity to share the image. The image was later shared and 1,261 people liked the image once it was shared. So when they'd noticed it on someone else's wall. So you can imagine how far these images are travelling on Facebook. Images like this with coffee, with the Greek coffee, are the most popular. Images like this with the Simea, with our Greek flag, quite popular. So 10,000, 10,900 um, people reached, quite popular. Not as popular as coffee. And who would have thought, maybe because the two, maybe coffee seems to sort of go a bit more with the, you know, your morning wishes of, you know, have a good day and all that stuff. Still popular, much more popular, say, than photos of animals or, you know, photos of cute bunnies or little kittens, much more popular than that, much more popular of little kids, uh, but just not as popular as coffee. Scenes like this, 24,000 people reached, close to 2,000 likes, um, again, very popular. They like being wished um, a good start to their week, I've noticed. So they like not just the Kalimera, they like the, you know, have a good week. Now this is something I think um, most of us expect. Um, anything to do with our religion seems to be quite popular. So uh, we have here Panaya wishing Facebook users a Kalimera. Um, very popular, 16,000. Still not as popular as coffee. So coffee seems to be more, an image of coffee seems to be more popular than an image of um, the Virgin Mary. But anyhow, still very, very popular. Um, much more popular than kittens and puppies and so forth. Flowers are also very popular. So I've noticed that next to coffee, flowers seem to take second place. Um, they like images uh, with flowers. So. This particular image only had a small reach of 10,000 people, so the likes, it's reflected in the likes, 648 total likes. Uh, but still quite popular, uh, as was this particular image here. So this is one of the uh, my recent images here, 16,000 people reached. Again, the most popular image being coffee, so coffee seems to take the cake. Um, look. What I'm trying to say is that culture does affect the way in which people are using Facebook. You don't see a lot of Australian Greeks. If you were to conduct your own personal little observations with your own circle of uh, Australian Greek friends on Facebook, very few would be inclined to share a post like this in the morning saying Kalimera. Just like if you were to conduct a little search of your Australian friends online, very few, if any, 
would be inclined to post an image like this in the morning, each morning, saying Kalimera. I'm going to be uh, brief now and sort of summarizing, summarizing what I, I guess today's um, presentation and saying that there's still a lot of uh, research that needs to be done. I believe that um, culture does play a role. However, to what degree is yet to be identified? Um, this is just a very small, tiny look, casual observation, as I mentioned earlier, into whether or not, uh, or what makes you know, these Facebook users in Greece tick. So I used one very, very, very simple example, um, the, the Kalimera post. And I find that um, there are definitely differences between the Greeks in Greece, who are more inclined to share images such as this on Facebook, than the Greeks living in Australia, and Australians, who are less inclined, if at all, to share images such as this. There are obviously still other things um, I could have referred to. So, for example, a lot of Greeks um, like to use anecdotes and share anecdotes. But I find that Greek Australians like sharing anecdotes too. So there are similarities between the two, but there are obviously big, big differences. Australians likewise, so not just Australian Greeks, but true blue Aussies, uh, they also like using uh, anecdotes and sharing anecdotes online. So it appears that Australian Greeks seem to be a bit more in line with their host country rather than with their home country. If you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm hoping one day I can come back and present um, some substantial, uh, substantial data in relation to my personal study. Unfortunately, I couldn't because I haven't published yet. But um, there's also another lady in the audience who I'm just going to mention. <laughs> she's not expecting it, Melina. Um, she's also looking at uh, Facebook and how Greeks who used to live in Greece but now live in Australia are using Facebook. Maybe one day she'll be up here speaking to you guys uh, in relation to her topic. She's also a PhD student. Uh, if you have any questions, though, I would be more than welcome to answer them. And I hope you found the presentation somewhat informative. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Maria. I think you've left us with more questions than answers. <laughs> and um, I'd like you to give a public undertaking that when you finish your, submit your PhD thesis, you'll give your swung song at the Greek community in Melbourne before anywhere else and uh, with all the results. Okay. Um, any questions? Just stand up and just yell them out for the moment. Yes. Yes. Well, look, I can only imagine they're catching up on sleep because they're, <laughs> cause they're awake all night. No, um, look, I assume it has something to do with um, their sleeping hours. I mean, a lot of Greeks, having just come from there now, I sort of really try to monitor what, how they get about their everyday life. And it's very generic what I'm going to say now, but I notice that they start their daily life quite late. Um, and they don't... I, th I find that... Australians seem to jump online uh, first. It's one of the first things they tend to do. So they'll wake up, they sort of, you know, it's part of their daily routine. They'll jump online and have a little look to see, you know, who sent messages or whatnot. Uh, whereas Greeks don't seem to do it. And that might have something to do with um, limited access to the internet. Um, a lot of Greeks are using either laptops as opposed to their devices. Uh, so tablets and iPhones. Um, so I can only imagine that they're just catching up on sleep. That's my only explanation. Can I also add that Maria's just come back from Greece and on Tuesday she's interviewed three triple Z. It's an eight o'clock program, which means one in the morning in Greece and she had no problem with that at all. So that confirms <laughs> that data. So.
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Anyhow, any other questions? Oh. Sorry, sorry. Oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what, it definitely may, um, it may change depending on the season. I haven't particularly looked at that. This is just depending on this one, looking back at this one particular week that's passed. Although generally, the dip always seems to be in the middle there, in the morning. But I do think, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it changes slightly depending on the season, yeah. I, I don't have Facebook. I, wow. I use SMS more than anything as a mean of communication. And I must be more like the Greeks, because every morning I send good mornings with, with coffees there. Really? Or, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But I'm wondering if it's got anything to do with the cost. For example, in Greece, I think messages are normally much more expensive than the internet, OK? And also, in Greece, I noticed when I was over there, a lot of Greeks use uh, use the Facebook or use the internet when they're at various coffee shops because all coffee shops have access to Wi-Fi. Wi if you look, what happens in Greece, you walk in and the first thing people ask is Pyosinokodikos, what's the code? <laughs> and they all go on. So I'm wondering whether or not there's a cost issue here in regards to the use of Facebook compared to SMS messages and stuff like that because again, another thing I've noticed, they are very, very careful, especially now in the times of crisis on how they u best use their um, their data use is therefore maybe that's why you get a lot of Greeks getting on Facebook at particular times possibly or now three o'clock in the morning I don't know where they are and they're using <laughs> Facebooks possibly if Saskiladika maybe they sort of make when Wi-Fi or Saskiladika daughter but I, apparently they don't go to the um, those centres anymore but the well they definitely don't go to bed because <laughs> they're, so, they're somewhere three a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I also notice they wake up early in the morning. They have a bit of a siesta in the evening too, and I think that's what keeps most Greeks going. They have a sleep between five between three and. Like in most, I'd say apart from August, a lot of Greek public servants wake up at seven o'clock and these guys go to sleep two to three o'clock, but they, they wake up at seven o'clock, mm. but they get home three o'clock, so they have a bit of a nap for three or four, two, two hours or so, and then they, they're ready to sort of uh, keep on going. But is there a cost issue you think involved in this whole thing? Well, look, you raise a very interesting point because um, I can't really comment on whether or not a cost issue is involved. It very well might be the case. Certainly the fact that people are accessing from the laptops is very different from here. So for example, most people are accessing Facebook because they have the money to buy smartphones and very expensive smartphones, right? Um, whereas in Greece, it's sort of the opposite. You see a lot of people rolling around with these old Nokias and you know, smartphones, you well, know, they saw brands you've never even heard iPhones of. iPhones are, you know, not many people have iPhones in Greece. Exactly. Apple iPhones, they have different types of versions basically, you see, yeah. But one thing I, a question that this begs, given, the economic crisis in Greece at the moment and over the last couple of years, maybe is this one of the reasons why Greeks feel the need to uplift their peers socially online um, compared to, say, people over here who seem to have, you know, seem to be having, um, you know, a much um, easier ride than a lot of the, than the Greek counterparts. Um, so it is an interesting point. Just a question from Jeff. Um, Ma Maria, in your st um, study of the images that people respond to, have you tried engineering it? And I was thinking, what if you combined panaya with coffee? <laughs> that's, and, that's, ha can I say that that's not actually a, um, a bad idea? And I think it was uh, on my name day, so Ayo Fanurio, 27th of August, uh, there was an image of St. Fanurius in the background next to a funny ropita and a cup of Greek coffee and that went wild. So okay. <laughs> that, that took off. So the, o the other thing, <laughs> this is um, uh, your methodology is sociology, I presume. My methodology? Yes, it's, it's quantitative. It's qualitative, yeah. yes. Quantitative. Quantitative and yeah. qualitative. It's actually uh, a combination. Well from, from a qualitative point of view, as a, co as a cultural comparison, um, I, in Greece, I hear Galimera, Galiavdomada, Mina, Savarokiria, Kiria. Hello, Savarokiria, yep. please. Um, but not in Australia. We don't have that tradition of integrating gre greetings and have a happy whatever. 
Yes. We would say good day. Which we, is we never say good month. Which is why I think um, the culture that's a cultural aspect that influences the way in which we yes. are using it. So perhaps people respond to it. And I don't know if you've done any cross cultural comparisons, but I refer here quickly to the BBC website from the twenty fourth of January this year, and I'll read. When it emerged this week that the culprit behind India's slowing internet is the daily flow of millions of good morning text messages. Wow. Mm, yeah. Um, so if you do it, I'll give this to you afterwards for I cross... I would love to see that. And um, mothers are the biggest users of it, connecting with their extended family across India and across In the India, world. In India, across India, yeah. wow. Yeah. So. Um, if you're doing any cross-cultural comparisons... Oh, that'd be fantastic. Um, I intend to focus on cross-cultural comparisons between different cultures. This stage, uh, I'm focusing on yeah. Greeks and Australian Greeks. Yes, but, but yeah. this is Jan January this year. Fantastic. Um, a, a news report. And you saw from the stats earlier that the Indians make up 270 million Facebook users, so... My goodness. So the Indian good morning coffee, yeah. <laughs> Um, I was thinking a comparison between name days and birthdays. That right, would be... Beca because here it's birthdays that... Um, would be an interesting yeah. comparison. I was also going to suggest two other things, and that is I've noticed with Facebook that Greeks in Australia use it for social events, yes. for what's happening in terms of Greek music or... or yes, yes. And uh, it's, there are some people that are on... Facebook, dancing, Facebook, every day there's, a, there's sites where they go to see what event is on in the Greek community. Yes. And I think that's another one. But the question I really wanted to ask is, I'd love to see a comparison of how Greeks use Facebook politically and compare it with how Australians might use Facebook politically. They're because a lot more active politically on Facebook. Who Greek, is? Greeks and Greens. Well, I thought that Australians were actually quite active. The number of petition <laughs> sites, uh, issue sites, uh, etc., uh, uh, phenomenal in Australia. So that would be a very interesting comparison. I think um, that would be an interesting comparison indeed because um, th th I think that's a matter of quality. So Greeks are very vocal on Facebook when it comes to politics, but how much of that, what's the quality of that output? You know, of those posts that they're uploading, as far as um, you know, politics goes. You Are know, they organising activities? Are they doing petitions or just venting? You do, see, yeah, yes. You see a lot of venting. So that's what I, when I say quality, that was me trying to be quite polite. Um, there's a lot of venting out there, but that would be a very interesting comparison too. A lot of Christus Pana years, I imagine. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting. Hi, thank um, you. I know you can't uh, talk about your results, but I was just wondering um, what, in your discussions, what, what are the differences in the cultures that you were discussing when, when, you're, when you're writing out? So, the difference between Greeks, Greek Australians, and Australians. What okay. are the cultural differences? The cultural differences are the emphasis that they place on certain aspects of their own cultures. So, for example, um, religion. Now, I, won't, I mean, I think with the Australian example, it's fairly similar. You don't yet see a lot. I don't, definitely don't see a lot of my Australian friends. And my research, the data, I can't talk too much about it, but it has sort of revealed that uh, Australians don't seem to be uh, as active when it comes to posting about religions, whatever that religion may be, whether it's Lutheranism, Protestantism, whatever, Catholicism. Australian Greeks post in relation to their religious beliefs, so predominantly Greek Orthodox faith, but not as much as what the Greeks do. And the Greeks post on the big days, so the big saint days, um, the big events in, the, you know, in our religious calendar, so Easter, Christmas, a lot more prolifically. And it's almost becoming a trend there. It's sort of like it's, it's not considered not polite if you're on Facebook and you don't wish someone a happy name day. <coughs> That's almost considered rude. Um, whereas a lot of Greeks here wouldn't really be that offended. They just wouldn't really think twice about it. Um, and Australians obviously don't celebrate that particular event anyway. Um, so those are the sorts of differences that are impacting the way 
Greeks are using Facebook. I find Australian Greeks just seem to align a lot closer to Australians, and that's quite normal, I think. Um, a lot of people I speak to, though, they sort of assume it would have been the other way around. They kind of expect Australian Greeks to follow the Greek example. It's clearly not the case. Mm. Um, Ray, have you used um, sporting examples? Like, what type of different images do you put up there where you get, let's say, more responses from men, from men, for example? Or? Men tend to respond quite highly to patriotic images, so images that have of the semi, so of the flag. Um, they do respond quite highly to um, religious images, and they respond really highly to images of coffee. <laughs> so coffee just takes, I don't know, I don't even know, I don't understand that, but it's sporting images. I have tried sporting images. They're not as, they're not fans. They're not a big fan. They generally seem to respond well to patriotic images. Any um, further questions? Yanni? Thank you very much for your unusual but excellent presentation. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, the question I would like to ask you is how would you rate the educational and cultural value of Facebook? The educational and cultural value. I don't know well, if I'm the do right people to gain, ask. <laughs> do people gain very much out of the use of it or it has a negative impact? If you listen to radio programs nowadays, is quite a lot of people, usually females, getting into trouble by <laughs> using Facebook and meeting, say, people with faked information. Mm, I know what you're talking about. And a lot about. of people get into trouble. A lot of men too, yeah. A lot of men too, but okay. I said a lot of people get into trouble. That <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, a lot of women complain that have been manipulated by unscrupulous men through the Facebook. Look, I think that's definitely an issue. More women than men, basically. It's definitely an issue, but it's a little bit outside the scope of what I'm looking at. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, we have some final questions. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, thank you very much, Maria. Just a um, thank you. small gift from the community. Oh, thank you very okay, much. Just a bottle of wine. Thank and you. Uh, we hope to see you um, very soon um, after your PhD submissions. Definitely. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. Um, and don't forget next week's lecture, the Memorial, the Dimitris Tolomas Memorial Lecture by Professor uh, Sanikas from Flinders University. Hope to see you all here next week as well. Thank you.